2020 itself has been a really bad, really surreal kind of year. And in the schmas of FUBAR that this year has been on the calendar, it is crazy to me to think of in the realm of you never thought it would actually happen. You never maybe saw it coming. The WWE has decided to actually go there with Roman Reigns and change the character. I still fundamentally disagree that it's a full-out heel turn. I don't care how many of the dirt sheet journalists will talk about it, how many fans will talk about it. Even WWE puts it out there that he's a villain doesn't necessarily mean there's a difference between character change and heel, but we will talk about that in a couple of minutes. But it is fascinating to me that you have him come back at the end of SummerSlam, Sunday night, and then Friday, you're waiting all night like, where is Roman? What's Roman doing? Why, why, why haven't we seen Roman? What's going on here? This is the big story coming out of SummerSlam, and you idiots are really screwing this up? Well, it took them a long time to get there, but boy, when they got there, they really got there. And you've now done two things with Roman Reigns that are incredibly interesting in the course of less than a week. First, the return on Sunday, the shirt saying, wreck everyone, leave, and destroying Braun and destroying The Fiend and calling one a joke, and the other one talking about how I made you and you're nothing without me, which, by the way, is fundamentally kind of true. Um, then to have him there with the advocate, Paul Heyman, Heyman Hustle himself. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's been that kind of bizarre of year, so what difference does it make? Roman Reigns right now, and this is not sheep talk, like this is legit talk. Even just off of what's happened at SummerSlam and SmackDown, Roman Reigns to me is the most interesting character in professional wrestling at this moment. Because there has clearly been a conscientious decision made to do something different. There has been a clear shift in the paradigm here. Pardon the AEW pun there. And there has been a paradigm shift of focus here to where you're going in a different direction with him. So that people have been complaining about for years, people have been fiending for for years, people have been talking about for years, and they actually actually went there. And what's truly fascinating to me about this is after all the years of fighting against this with Cena, after all the years of insisting on not doing it with Cena, which all the while caused great damage to the company and the talent within the company, which ultimately hurt the John Cena wrestling character, it's like they've learned the lesson from that and said, you know what? No one is so critically important to the show, and especially at a time where we don't have as many people watching anyways, and you don't really have fans in the arena. What the hell difference does it make? This is a time to get innovative. This is a time to shake shit up. This is a time to do something different. And clearly, there has been a fundamental change of philosophy here, and they are going to do something different with Roman Reigns. A lot of us looked at him as Samoa Cena, Cena 2.0. They never ever did it with Cena, which is why even when a Cena does come back, it has a diminishing return there because there was never anything to cleanse the palace. There was palate. There was never anything to balance it out. There was never anything that was really done differently with the guy. For over a decade, it was always the same. And even in the face of all this logic and all these other opportunities that suggested you could have done something different, they just fundamentally absolutely refused to do so. But here and now, they're doing with Roman. And I'm sorry, for this particular moment in time, based off of what has happened during the course of this week, Roman Reigns is the most interesting character in professional wrestling, period. Period. When you look at the history, when you look at what's been done with him, where he's been, fan reactions, where they are potentially heading now, there is nothing that is more interesting. Absolutely nothing. We'll see how long it stays that way. But at this moment, the WWE has gotten themselves something. Now, I personally can't wait to see how they ultimately screw it up. Now, a lot of you will say to me that this is a heel turn. And this may just be semantics or difference of perspective or opinions. And maybe in the traditional sense, 
him aligning with Haman is supposed to represent a heelish type of maneuver. I don't really see it that way. Even when you talk about the attack on Sunday, like he got pissed because he had two guys fighting over a title that he technically never lost. It's not exactly a heelish thing. Even the attacking of those two and kind of sneaking up behind him in and of itself does not automatically make him a heel. Even the shirt, which you can argue maybe has some heelish undertones to it, wreck everyone, leave. It doesn't have to be. Like you could be edgy and not have to be a villain. And even the association with Haman. Like the association with Haman and Lesnar, Lesnar long since ceased to be a heel. Like the most heelish Lesnar's ever been was right after WrestleMania 30 when he beat The Undertaker. But by the time they turned around and had him wipe out Cena at SummerSlam that year, it was a wrap. Like that was a really dumb decision. Because he beat Cena to such a degree and they presented it in such an overbearing, overdominant fashion that all these fans had these feelings of repressed anger and resentment towards Cena, in some ways myself included, for what he had done and the damage he had done to the company over the past decade. Looked at that, and it was like Lesnar that we were able to live vicariously through. And Lesnar helped to cleanse the palate a little bit. And it's been an ongoing battle ever since whenever you would bring in Lesnar. He just wasn't the same type of attraction. He ended up kind of being the wrong type of attraction. And when you look at Roman here, you're saying, okay, so now he's aligned himself with Haman. And sure, we go down the typical he's a heel tripe until you realize that fans are going to be more interested in it. The adult fans are going to get behind this more. You know, some of the reasons that Roman might have aligned himself in character with a Paul Heyman you know, like these don't necessarily fundamentally in and of themselves represent a total shift to the heel side of the fence. And if anything, if we look at WWE's history over the past 10 to 15 years, more often than not, it's the Cena effect, the Orton effect, kind of that breakfast club effect in general. But you look at it and you say, the baby faces are the villains because they are the obstacle. It's the heels that are the heroes because they're the underdogs and they've got to do all this to overcome the freaking obstacle that is the babyface standing in their way. Difference of opinion. Difference of perspective, maybe. You're not going to hear me call it a flat-out heel turn because I just don't view it that way. I don't view it in that light. And others do, and that's fine. No, no issue there. But I think the bigger thing is what comes next? What's up now for Roman Reigns? Like, what comes down the pike? I think a lot of folks are assuming that he's going to win the belt on Sunday at Payback. And by God, I got to say, unless they've got an incredibly creative finish that they can pull straight out of their asses, he has to win that belt on Sunday at Payback. Because if Roman doesn't win the belt there, it already makes it look really stupid. Why did you come back and attack the two just to get into the match to then not win? What was the point of aligning yourself with the advocate Paul Heyman, who you have, have you know, an association with Brock Lesnar, a multiple-time world champion and a dominant world champion at that? Why would you sit there then and not have him win the strap Sunday? Now, you're talking about you're making a clear direction here that he's now going to be the you, but he's going to be the top guy on SmackDown. And this has to be for a, an extended length of time. He has to win that belt on Sunday. Then you would assume he has to go through or deal with Bray Wyatt for a little while. And then maybe he deals with Braun Strowman. And then you get maybe to the point of the Royal Rumble. And maybe somebody like a Lesnar comes back. And it's a Heyman family versus Heyman family match for the title at WrestleMania. And Roman kicks the crap out of Lesnar. Like that, that's the story here. That's the path that this has to go down. Especially you see some reports talking about the WWE doesn't have a main event for WrestleMania 37. Well, it does now. It certainly does now. And the fact of, well, they've done it before, the fact that they've done this, and the fact that they've done that, the dynamics are significantly different here. It's not the same setup. It's not the same match. It's not the same story. 
And that in and of itself makes for interesting, potentially, wrestling and wrestling television. Yeah, and I look at this for Roman, like, what do I really feel like this is about? It's about a couple of things. It's about, one, Roman being out for several months due to stepping back because of COVID made the company realize that he wasn't as valuable of a commodity in that scene of prop roles the company thought that he was. That also led them to a point where they were so desperate from a rating standpoint for both Raw and SmackDown, you know, that on at least one of the shows, they had to do something. And for them, the choice was maybe SmackDown because you're on network television on a Friday night. You feel like Roman could have more impact there. It's more especially designed to feature him in that type of environment. I also feel like for Roman, this is a chance to really spread his wings and grow himself as an overall talent, performer, actor, show more range, a little more versatility. And some of you might say, well, now he's associated with Heyman. He ain't going to say shit. And, and it actually, in that case, it might work. Like, to me, this is all about Reigns' next step of his career, which inevitably has to be movies. Like, you look at this dude. He's big. He's buff. The ladies absolutely love him. He has silky smooth hair. All these things. Like the eyes that ladies just get wet in their panty regions about. Like he screams out and oozes out potential future movie star, movie guy. And that's what I think he's trying to transition himself to in a couple of years. And frankly, I couldn't blame him. And if this character turn goes well, and if this character turn is successful, then I would potentially expect within the next three years or so that Roman's going to be more full-time actor and part-time wrestler. And if that's the case, that might be okay, too. Um, it is interesting, though. It really, really is. And maybe this is only interesting and it happened only because of pure desperation. And that could very possibly be it. And maybe as part of it, again, is the circumstance and the situation. If you had live crowds right now, maybe you wouldn't have done this. Maybe if viewership was just a little bit better, you wouldn't have done this. And... When thinking about WWE, there had to be something that triggered the panic for them to pull the lever here. But thank God they did. Because just bringing Roman back as just the same old dude and doing the same old thing and wearing the same old gear and all this, doing all this other crap. Like, I still want to see what his ring gear is come Sunday. I want to see what his theme music is. I want to see how Heyman handles the Reigns introduction. Like, there are a lot of things here I'm actually really curious about. It's the most curious I've ever been about the Roman Reigns character. So, we shall see. They've done a couple of things already. Sunday, though, payback. We all know what has to happen. Unless you come up with some other really, truly out-of-the-box creative out to where you don't go there, and even then, I would kind of dispute the logic or reasoning behind it. He needs to walk into Payback Sunday and walk out the Universal Champion and not just do that, but do that in kind of impressive, dominant fashion. He has to do it. He has to be the champ. He absolutely has to. Because if he don't, then what was the whole point of doing all this crap? Just saying.